Ewan McGregor just him playing Obi Wan. It's like it's like putting on a glove. Welcome to the BXG podcast, the podcast where pop culture and nerd culture meet at the nexus of the universe and are melted as seamlessly as parkour in The Little Mermaid. I am one of your right. hosts, Bretton Beswick, alongside my co-host, the last of the Jedi himself, Greg Filson. Greg, how are you this evening there, Katy Perry? Uh, I am doing great. Uh, I just saw Top Gun. Um, and we will review For that. The first time that movie's like 40 years old. The the new one, Top Gun Maverick. Uh it's it, you'll find out on the on the pod when we actually release that. But uh let's just say I uh was not uh disappointed Impressed? at all. Oh, okay. No. Um it was it was fun, and we'll we'll talk about that obviously in the pod. So I'm flying high off of that. Um real real G's, real speed. I'm ready to go, Brent. Yeah, that's fine. We'll see. I'm seeing it tomorrow, so yeah, we'll, we'll record that sometime this week. I, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, 155 million dollar opening. 155 million. Yeah, is that good for Memorial Day? What's that's really good. I, it's the highest Tom, Gro- Tom Cruise opening ever. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. What are you talking about? He's literally the biggest box office guy single guy with only with no real like connection to anything stupid so that's awesome it's a great opening i don't probably the only thing that's ever beaten as like some marvel release or whatever i'm, but... I'm actually looking it up it's good opening. uh pirates of the caribbean pirates of the caribbean at world's end yeah i knew one. a pirates movie would be ahead of it because uh, Indiana movies. jones in the kingdom of the crystal skull Oh yeah, well oh, everybody Jesus. went and saw that movie. That was ridiculous. I saw that. Uh, yeah, that was a regret. Yeah, we saw that. I think we saw that together. Yeah. Right? Everybody saw that opening weekend because you just want to see Harrison Ford. X Men: The Last Stand. Big movie. Uh, I think that was three. X Men Three. Yeah, that was. Three. Um. Yeah. Okay. So it's a great opening for a is, non. So it's the best domestic opening, actually. Yeah. Yep. Um. Great movie. But Pirates of the Caribbean worldwide, so we'll have to see what the worldwide ends up. Worldwide, uh, worldwide. Pirates was three, three hundred nine million. Indiana Jones, three hundred seventeen. Which million. Pirates was it again? Uh, the third one. The third one, which is the okay. worst of the original trilogy. Or uh, yeah, the worst of the original yeah. trilogy, in my opinion. The second one's probably the best. First one's really good too. Um, yeah, ding, 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 ding. That's pretty much. I mean, we don't have to go really. Far no, we'll go into it. Top five. Uh, top five: Fast Six, X Men: The Last Stand, Indiana Jones, Crystal Skull, Pirates of the Caribbean, and then depending on how the worldwide growth shakes out, uh, Top Gun. So, Top Gun. Not bad. I mean, that's fine. Like I said, I don't really like. I like the original Top Gun. Uh, it's probably top three tom cruise movie for me um but i'm not a big tom cruise fan so that's not saying like a ton it's not even Uh, like truly a tom cruise movie either the original like he's in it and he's the star but it's before tom cruise but but there's other people it's val kilmer it's you know there's other people in the he this is he's the star of this movie well i mean miles teller is not a star Eight, well, no, I wasn't going to say him. 80s yeah. Tom Cruise, Days of Thunder, Cocktail, all that stuff, Risky Business. I mean, yeah. This is before. Some would say that was though. the best the, of his, the height of his powers. I, yeah, and it's awesome. Some would say that. And all movies that I still enjoy to this day. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. 40 years ago. I would love to know another actor who's done anything close. Nicholas Cage. Not money wise. Money wise? Oh, there's like box office. What are you talking about, man? Like, I mean, as the single Le- star. As he the single hasn't... star. He... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, Tom I guess if you uh, this is the only thing I'll say before you I throw out, out like, we the, can go the in the Dark Knight trilogy or, you know. No, I mean? this is the last thing. Tom Cruise is the only movie star left. 
All He's right. the only movie star. Let's just wait for only movie star. You. He's that the only movie star left. There's not another person that is a movie star. That doesn't make sense. I don't There's actors. That... No, movie stars are people that have charisma on all right, and off let's the screen on. all the time. Let's. He's the last one. There's oh, nobody left. Oh my goodness! Uh, I can't. Left. I I might vomit. Let's start with who is another movie star, Brent. We'll save this for the Top Gun thing because now we're just sure, sure. We're I don't. Let's even move know. on. Uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, every Friday at nine a.m. Podbean, uh, worldwide services, BXG podcast publishes. Friday and Monday, nine a.m. Rain or shine. Holidays be damned. Uh, social media, facebook.com slash BHC podcast, Instagram at BHC podcast at GT Phil's at Y2B, Twitter, BHC podcast at GT Phil's and at Y2B, Discord, uh, BHC podcast. Come, come chat with us, drop some memes, YouTube for the reviews and the trailer reactions and all that stuff. Matthew McConaughey, he's a movie star, he's got. On, he's he's got star. more charisma off screen than he has on it. All right, all right. That all was right. yeah. That's what I would say. He's more famous for off screen than on screen, but he's not a movie star. I beg to differ. Obi Wan uh, started this week with it, on the Disney Pluses. The Disney Pluses. I think it's just uh, the Disney Plus. Just the Disney Plus. Yeah, sons of bitch. Uh, <laughs> Is the hot dog a sandwich? Is the hot dog a sandwich? That's more of the Fourth of July thing, though, right? I mean, it's more of a memorial thing. I could go for a. What are, what are you saying? Grill there? season. Grill season. Yeah. Starts today. Ah, uh, it started for me like a um, couple weeks ago. I think on the unofficial, like when everyone's like, "Here we go," but there's no grilling uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. true what uh what are you what are you drinking there i am having a figaro mountain uh lizard's mouth ipa i don't figaro mountain local santa barbara brewery here and i'm having their ipa it's got a lizard on it it's also a hiking thing here you drink yeah lizard's mouth the name of a, a hiking trail what about the winking lizard downtown cleveland the winking vince we have been there I don't know that we ever went in. It was always a little intimidating. Um, <laughs> Maybe. Oh, oh one, no. um, a couple, <laughs> a couple uh, corrections. At a couple. Of oh, okay. Uh, well, first of all, we announced on the Friday episode that I would be with you in Chicago. That is not the case. A correction. Uh, because a tree fell Life off happens. of my cars. Yeah. So, so there's that. Uh, but Greg will be. I will still be in stadium. Chicago. I will sign photos and babies. Right, bottle of Both. beach. Yeah, I'll be there outside. Right. What about? Um, never mind. Um, the other thing was when we did our top, uh, top ten non singles. I made an egregious error. <clears throat> an egregious error by leaving off, uh, really any song from the counting crows august and everything after album uh but i would throw omaha on there somewhere in the middle of america okay i wouldn't but that's you wouldn't no i don't really like the counting crows oh that's a great album if you don't think so i know that's your opinion and i expect that the album is just not something i like i don't like his voice i don't like his voice what's his name greg Chris. Nope. Wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of his name because I don't like them that much. Adam Duritz. Adam Duritz. Yeah. Adam even... Duritz. 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 Don't yeah, I don't compare like him. him with Fred. <laughs> Fred Duritz. Another, another great I won't compare him vocalist. Like voice. I'm sure you know it, yeah. his voice doesn't register in my ear. Connect. Fred Durst? Both. Fred Durst? Adam Durst and Fred Durst. Duritz. I think he's Jewish. I don't like his voice. You don't like Jewish people? Why don't no, you I love Jewish. I love Jewish with the people. anti-Semitic. Remarks, I right? love Jewish people. I respect the culture and the people. I just don't like him as a singer. His voice doesn't register to me. Doesn't. 
Obi Wan. I like Adam Levine's voice. Who? Maroon Five. That's. You saw like Adam a, Levine in concert. A lot of times. And he has a good voice. Like three times. He's a good voice. None of those were necessarily my choice. I'm just saying you saw him. Yeah. Also saw Kelly Clarkson. That's probably pretty good. Not She's choice. a good voice. Let's do what we're here for. Since How about that? Can we do that? We can do that. Okay. Obi-Wan starring uh, uh, Obi-Wan. The first two episodes came to Disney Plus this past Friday. Uh, Ewan McGregor returns to star in the latest Star Wars Disney Plus series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Episode one reintroduces Obi-Wan as he is living out his days in hiding, watching over Luke Skywalker from afar. The show also introduces us to the Jedi, Jedi Inquisitors who are charged with hunting down the remaining Jedi. The third sister has a particularly strong desire to find Kenobi, who has been missing for 10 years following the events of Revenge of the Sith when he did indeed have the higher ground. Additionally, we get a glimpse of Alderaan where Bail Organa, played by Jimmy Smits, is raising Princess Leia as his own at the <clears throat> end of episode one. Uh, Leia is kidnapped by a group of mercenaries dreaming of Alderanication, uh, led by none other than Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, in episode two, Obi-Wan, after a close call with the Inquisitors and a quick save by Uncle Owen, heads off to find Leia, although it takes some convincing. He is able to outwit the band of outlaws and save Leia, despite her running from him. Before he is able to escape, the third sister uh, runs the Grand Inquisitor through, but not before it is revealed to Ben that Anakin is alive and the show fades out with Vader having a Bacta tank soak. Greg, what did you think of? Let's just take them one at a time. First episode. First episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. I thought the episode, I, I like the way that they recap the beginning where it's like, here's those first three movies, the second trilogy but the one two and three episodes <clears throat> and like they condensed it in and it's like oh these movies actually had like a real plot and things that mattered but because they were so poorly done this is the thing it's like it was so funny to me it's like oh we could have recapped that entire thing in like five seconds like we did here and then we brought us to a storyline um i mean i just thought that the way they introduced everything was really cool uh obviously we all know you know, Obi-Wan, we know that storyline, all these things. And with the original three, four, five, and six, and then with the first three or the, the second three, but one, two, and three, um, to kind of mesh that all together and to bring us back to things that I think as Star Wars fans, you care more about with the idea of Luke and Leia and that build up and Darth Vader, which everyone, you know, loves Darth Vader so to bring that in and have that as the background obviously we don't get anything with him but you know that's happening in you know in this series so I thought it was really cool uh, to have Flea come out of nowhere yeah and that was awesome uh <laughs> it was it was one of those things for me where it's just like it tells you how many people absolutely love Star Wars because of the guest appearances we're like please I'll, I'll be anything in this you know, just to be a part of Star Wars. And yeah. like, you know, and that was what was really cool to me about all this. It's just, it felt cool. It looked cool. It reminded me more of, it reminded me more of the original trilogy mm. than a lot of other things have. Like just, it felt kind of old school. Like, of course there's CGI mm. and stuff, but it felt very like archaic and in the best possible way of like, this is kind of ground root Star Wars. And we're not trying to do anything more than tell you a story, which at the end of the day was Star Wars originally. It's just to tell you a story. We don't, we're not trying to build off of anything. You know what happens to these characters, but here is what led us up to this. And I thought that I actually think the first episode was just, it got me really hyped. It really did. And it makes me, it made me very excited for episode two. And then obviously we'll, we'll get into that. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think for starters, Ewan McGregor just him playing Obi Wan. It's like it's like putting on a glove. It just fits like a like a glove, right? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yep. And so for him to come back, it's it's like he 
it's like he personally hasn't missed a beat. Mm-mm. And so I, I enjoyed that. Uh, it was nice to see Jimmy Smith's back in that role as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, as far as Bale Organa, uh, Organa, I guess. I found I found Leia, like Little Princess Leia, to be a little bit annoying. That was She's just a little precocious. Yeah. Yeah. But I kind of think that's how Leia would be. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to, you know, we prior to this, we really only get a look at her as, you know, general, general Organa and slash or, you know, senator. So seeing her being a little bit more wily or a little bit more rambunctious, maybe it was just the act, like the, the young actress or like mm-hmm. the direction, but she kind of annoyed me. Uh, the other thing was that the Inquisitors, let's talk about the Inquisitors for a second. So there was three Inquisitors. You have the Grand Inquisitor played by Rupert Friend, uh, the fifth sister played by Moses Ingram, and then the fifth brother, or I'm sorry, the third sister, and then the fifth brother played by Sung Kang of Han fame from Fast and the Furious. Uh, what a- any particular is about these three characters? I felt like they were just like, I don't want to say like, they were just dark side enough. You could tell that they probably had a good side to them because there was always like a little bit uh, that pushed them back from going all the way. And you see that more in the second episode, except for one character. And so that is what I'll say about them is there was a little, that was a good mix of like being part of the force and being part of the dark side and, you know, being a Jedi or, you know, that kind of background, but then also, that little mismatch, um, you know, they were aggressive, but not too aggressive, but they were believable villains in the sense of like, they weren't all bad, but they still had a mission to pursue. And I like that. Um, they kind of reminded me in a way of like, and I, I said this for it in, a, in an insulting way, but I mean, it's in a better way as like more like video game villains yeah. where they're probably easily defeated, but they at least stand in the way. Sure. And almost like MacGuffin villains Mm. where it's they're there and, you know, they probably really don't mean much in the scheme of like getting from point A to point Z. But there's B through Y to get through. And they're kind of that. Yeah, there's like these characters, especially Grand Inquisitor, have a lot of backstory in other mediums some of the cartoons and the comics and some of the novels the most recent successful game star wars star wars jedi fallen order which was the sequel was announced here the other day at star wars celebration i just didn't care for any of these characters like the the han or the sun kang character just seemed like a angry guy maybe he just needs a car fair uh the real the real hang up i had though was the third sister i thought she was terrible i thought that her (laughs) her lines were really cringy i felt like she was pretty stiff and then even more so in the second episode which we'll get to in a second but like unnecessarily just like aggressive like obviously there's a story here they opened the right. show with some kids escaping from order 66 so you wonder if she was one of those kids and she right. you know something to do with obi-wan failing back then Ooh. blah 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 but i just didn't i just that character did not resonate with me at all and i do think that i'm hopeful that the producers, writers, et cetera, of this show, they all know we're here for Obi-Wan versus Vader. Like that's what we're right, here right, for. Right. So I'm really hoping that she's just sort of some kind of undercard that gets, like you said, kind of gets, well, she's a MacGuffin. The, she's a yeah. MacGuffin. She isn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that she's just completely out of the picture by like the third or fourth episode, but I have this feeling that it's going to be something to the effect of she's been on this revenge quest and she's about to take him down and then he says something and she realizes that he's not the true enemy and then she joins his force only to be defeated by vader and then Mm -hmm. vader and obi-wan tussle that's kind of the problem i'm getting like a little bit aside from mandalorian which we have talked about is these shows and even the marvel shows are just so predictable at this point 
and so we'll see if my my hypothesis well, comes comes to bear fruit but that's what i just feel like this is trending in that direction and it very well could and honestly like i thought about that to a little bit of a degree and i think the other thing for me too is i i prefer this over the movies in a, in a way that would like at least the movies like i'm not going through and seeing through the two and a half hours or three hours and you kind of see it coming too. like True. this way we don't really know and if we're wrong we're wrong and you know we've been wrong before we've been right actually probably more recently um at least close to right with our predictions on stuff but the the thing that's kind of weird to me about these MacGuffins is like you said like she is very just here are lines read them and then move on yeah, um, she's very real stuff and I think, but it, the, the thing that you said is maybe she's just out three or four episodes in. Yeah, I'm hopeful. I actually think, <clears throat> I mean, I feel like with the way the writing is, it seems like that has to be the case because unless her character really develops in the third episode. Sure. We'll see. But, <laughs> you know, we'll see. But yeah, it, like, yeah. otherwise, I don't think you can write something like this and have it go on for that long with the way that she is written. So, yeah. Uh, let's just get into episode two then where Obi-Wan tracks down Princess Leia on this city planet with a little bit of help from Kamal and Johnny, Johnny, and Johnny mm-hmm. who's playing like, <sighs> a, like a phony Jedi. He's like pretending, but he's just using magnets, you know, magnets and strings and remotes and stuff <laughs> like that respect the hustle yeah you know but yeah um to me i like i like this episode too i mean i like that he you know was faking it and he ends up helping out as much as he can and then of course um you know the third sister is able to read his mind and devolves where they're at and all these things um the best thing about this is obi-wan uses the force to save leah to save Leia, to save Leia, sorry. Yeah. To save Leia. And it's just like, we get to see Obi-Wan doing, because we haven't seen Obi-Wan do an Obi-Wan thing in the first episode. And most of the second episode, we don't get to see that. And like you said, we just want to see Obi-Wan do Obi-Wan things. Right. And I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know where, you know, everyone ranks Obi-Wan Kenobi, but I think for the most part, he's a top three or four favorite character in the storyline of Star Wars. I just, uh... Oh, like he's definitely I I would say he's definitely the favorite of the prequels. Right. And And I think that and sorry to cut you off, but like I I, as I was watching this, I was just thinking to myself like, damn, man, you and McGregor didn't get as much credit credit as he should have for making those movies even remotely watchable. Well, he's the best actor by like a million miles in those movies. Well, I mean, Jackson's in them. If he's not doing acting, like, uh, and uh, like, I know you're being like you're making a joke, and Sam Jackson can be a great actor, but he's just not doing anything that's acting in those I think, movies. I think, <laughs> I think he's acting more in those than he is when he plays Nick Fury. I think Nick Fury, he's just Sam Jackson with it. I think he's Sam Jackson in kind of most things at this point. So, yeah, I think once he did his Quentin Tarantino run, he's just like was able to say f bombs and. Yeah. move on with his life but right um it, it like to me this felt like a building ground i, I really i will just say like i really like this and maybe it's because boba fett was so boring except for mandalore for mando things once mando yeah. came in mando was awesome but boba fett was boring at least this has like i like the blade runner setup of this episode yeah, i like sure. that kind of thing it, there's yeah. definitely paying homage to certain things and there's the scene where uh which i have in my background where he's just in the desert and Jane and I are like, was that just shot in 35 millimeter? Everything else was in digital because it looks so magnificent and so yeah. beautiful. Right. And the rest of the show is like obviously digital or whatever, but it was just like, it looks so good. Like this episode seemed more thought out, at least camera wise and the way it looked, mm-hmm. we still don't really know what the plot. And, you know, even, you know, I, I think, well, no matter what Mandalorian was just so good. Right. I mean, I just right. the thing. It's like Mandalorian is so, so good. I think Mandalorian is the best TV show of anything we've watched. Yeah. I really do. That we have uh, talked about on yeah. this show. I don't right. know. Is there a better TV show that we've talked about on this show 
I don't think so. I think Mandalorian is just so, so good above and beyond other things. We don't talk about Barry on this show. I really like yeah, Barry. Sure. There's um, other shows that we don't talk about. Is there, is I will say that there's what we actually there's, talk about. There's one next week that I'm going to say is better, but that's for next week. I'm talking about what we actually talk about on this um, podcast. Yeah. It's no, I'm best. saying that that one yeah. of the shows next week, I'm going to make the case that it's the best. Oh, thing. sure. But I'm as of right now, I'm talking right, as sure. of right now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. The Mandalorian is the best. And right. it, and so when you hold that kind of standard up to something and you come up with a show like this, it's tough. And as much as I really, really like this show and I, I even do episodes in, I, I just like it. And maybe it's just that little bit of the nerd culture getting into me where I just like Star Wars. And I want Star Wars to be good. Mm. I really do. We've talked about this before. I don't root against Star Wars. No, there no, are no. Star Wars fans out there. And you're one of us root against Star Wars. There are Star Wars fans that just root against Star Wars. Because they're like the original trilogy is the best, yeah. and yeah. whatever, like fuck you guys. All of a sudden, right. it's like I never, re- I want all Star Wars things to be awesome. Right? Yeah. If everything could be yeah. The Empire Strikes Back, that would be kudos to everyone. Yeah. That would be amazing. And that just doesn't happen. So it's like right now, it's just like I'm rooting for it. I think it's in a good place. Um, I think it's it's definitely better than Boba Fett at this point in the season. It's definitely better than Boba Fett. I have way more vested interest in this than I did Boba Fett. I was pretty, if we weren't watching Boba Fett for this, I might have backed out until someone said Mando's back. And I'm like, oh, now I'm back in because the show is interesting. So, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, it's tough to compare, you know, apples to oranges or Macintosh apples to Granny Smith (laughs) apples for that matter. But it is like, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. And I think the thing that, that, I think the thing that this has going for it that Boba Fett didn't was it's predictable in a good way. Whereas Boba Fett, it was unpredictable in a not great way Mm -hmm. because it was, we were very much like, when is something important going to happen? Right. No, at some point that we're going to get Obi-Wan and Vader. And I think that's what we're all waiting for that. You know what I mean? Hopefully we, we get it more than once. Hopefully it's not just the last episode, but there's that level of predictability of there's this thing that we want that that they know we want right and that's what we're gonna get and at the end of the day they know they have that right so i can stomach some of the bad acting sure and and the you know the cringy dialogue and stuff like that because at the end of the day i know we're gonna get what we want and the reality of it is is that the last time vader was on screen and it was something new it was at the end of rogue one like, and that's one of the most badass scenes in the history of movies. Period. It I don't care what anybody the most says. badass scene ever in a movie. It's 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 up there. It's so, literally where you're rooting for the villain. Well, it's not even that. It's just like, you <laughs> like just know you just know, right? You just know. like this guy. This guy. It's such just a good scene. A whole nother, just a whole nother level. But right. I digress. Yeah, I think that the show has a lot of potential. I think that Ewan McGregor's a star in this role. Yes, yes. And between that and knowing what's ahead keeps me excited. The first episode was very introductory. The second one, a little bit more relevance. We see that he's kind of out of touch with the force. He's struggling a little bit in the scene that he does use it. And the other thing is, is that we, you know, we, we got a reference and, and it's, I wonder if we're going to get Force Ghost Liam Neeson as well, because sure. that's something that's been talked about uh, within the show. And they made a point of showing that in the recap and he calls out to him at one point. Yeah. So there is that. And I think that between those two things, possibly even a Yoda cameo, because at this point, Yoda is still still kicking. Yep. You know, there's things to look forward to. And I think sure. that that this is a it's it's a it's a good not great start is what i would say i'd agree with that good not great for sure so obi-wan the next one will be wednesday and we'll have that we will have that for now we move on greg what do you get what do you get 
What happens when you mix the Little Mermaid and parkour? Um, something that exists. You get Netflix <laughs> anime bubble. Gravity defying bubbles rain down, cutting off Tokyo from the rest of the world. The city skyline becomes a playground for young people competing <clears throat> in parkour team battles. Protagonist Hibiki plummets into the sea, but is saved by a girl, Uta, with mysterious powers. Debuting at some film festival in Germany, Bubble. Greg, what'd you think? Bubble. I did not enjoy it. Which was um, better, this bubble or the bubble? Oh. Uh, I think for this one, I will say probably this one because the other one, like I expected something at least that I would enjoy. Right. This I had no expectations, even though, um, you know, like I don't. This is my thing. I don't. I'm not a huge anime person. Like I like right. Spirit Away because that's sure. just a good movie. That's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, that's um, just a good movie. And like some Studio anime Ghibli is a, stuff. Yeah, Studio yeah. Ghibli Ghibli stuff is like Ghibli. good, and I understand this was. I don't know. Like I, I, I stopped it. I, I watched it for like 45 minutes and I was like, I don't know what's going on. I think I texted you when I was at this point. It's like, I literally don't know what's going on. And I was like fully focused in this wasn't, I put my, I was charging my phone upstairs. So my phone right. wasn't even with me. Well, when we both watched it with, with uh, Japanese language and English. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And which I think is the best way to watch these things though. I do yeah. really believe that. Yeah, but I was like, I don't know what's going on. It's like I know they're doing parkour, right? And that I understood, but I didn't understand like what was at risk. The city was imploding because of bubbles, <laughs> but also there's a bubble around them, right? And so I was like, I don't, I literally don't know what's going on. And it's like I'm pretty attuned, like with understanding, even if a plot's bad, I like understand. This, I was just like, I literally don't know. And I had to pause it. Like, I just had to pause it. I had to step away from it. It was like, <laughs> I need to get away from this movie because I don't know what's going on. Am I dumb? I was like, <laughs> and I was like, am I dumb? I literally like, stopped and was like, am I stupid? I don't get this. Yeah. And then I came back like an hour or so later, watched 20 more minutes of it. It was like, I don't think I am dumb. I think this movie's dumb. Oh, no. I don't, <laughs> I don't think anything's did you happening. Did you finish it? I finished it. Okay. I still okay. was like, I, and I saw people comparing it to Little Mermaid, and I was like, yeah. I love the Little Mermaid. This is not the Little well, I Mermaid. I think that this, there was like direct, <laughs> like it was part of the story that they were telling. There was part, you're right. It was part yeah. of like, I understood that, but like, it was so funny. It was just like, but the like good parts of it were not like, it was just so Here's, weird. Yeah. And I, I just, and I get that can be some anime. I like, I'm not saying that yeah, like, sure. This is me not saying anime is weird. I just thought this it was is. weird. And then I don't think anything happened. And then I also think that you, when you add parkour, yeah. in, you're literally saying this doesn't matter. <laughs> like you're just, you're admitting this doesn't matter. We have like, it looks cool. 100% yeah. I'll say this movie looks awesome. Yes. yes. Movie yes. looks great. Like this yeah. is a good thing. I would think this is probably a good thing to like little kids. You throw this on. It's rated and- R. But they wouldn't know. I don't like, know it's how those, it's rated R. I don't know how it's rated R either. There's but no it's nudity. There's no nudity or violence, really. I mean, the yeah. violence is like very mundane. Yeah. I don't know. Oh no, it's PG. It's PG. Oh, okay. Thought, it was like if it's I thought rated I saw R. somewhere that it was rated R. I thought I did that, too. Yeah, yeah. Either way. Well, either way, I think it's it a like background bubble, thing for whatever. kids. Just let them yeah, see sure. the colors and stuff because it looks yeah. great. Yeah, and it does look awesome. The animation is the animation's yeah. super. Animation yeah. is a 10 out of 10, but the movie, I was just like, I don't, and when it ended, it's another thing to when it ended, I didn't know it was done. Yeah. It was like one of those things where like, oh, the, we're done? Like, I did this actual oh. thing where I like, I was like, oh, story is over. And I like swad. And like I said, and maybe it's just me, maybe it was my fault. I'm not like attuned with anime, like Here's especially recent say. anime. Especially, but. yeah. Okay. So first of all, I would say that we plan to do one anime thing a week for May, anime. Yeah. And anime. then we just didn't do yeah, that. Sure. Because sure. there was other things. And I wanted to make sure that we at least got one in. And I had seen this on like things to watch on Netflix because I watch anime. I'm the resident anime yeah. guy. 
right? So I'm I'm the one who picked this, and it was like, depending on where you looked, it was somewhat well regarded, but then other places it was like really poorly regarded. Yeah, yeah, it had a very mixed review. Yeah, super mixed reviews. Um, <clears throat> here's what I'll say: is with an anime film okay not necessarily see oh excuse me series but with an anime film oh excuse me sorry i had a long day you're looking for a couple i'm looking for a couple different things the first of those things is is the animation well done and i would say with this the animation was very well done the yeah. color schemes the palettes that they used were very interesting i thought the animation particularly in the parkour scenes was extremely fluid and i felt like top to bottom the animation was <clears throat> very well done i think you're also looking for score i've i like the score of this movie uh i thought that it played well to the movie the movie used the score as a strength the plot was bonkers like there's no getting yeah. around that the story yeah, okay. of this this movie was just like it was it was it was nuts but that's kind of the thing with a lot of anime movies is is there's just it's just kind of bonkers and i think that that's something that studio studio ghibli does really well is the the stories are more you know there's like a heartwarming and there's a moral sort of slant to some of those things and i do think that you kind of got that a little bit with this but not it was so vague it's so abstract that the story just the story couldn't get it out of its own way and right, i felt right. like they tried to do some different things throughout that kind of like pulled and pulled in different directions and, and the story just didn't necessarily work for me but um that's not always something i'm looking for with an anime movie i'm looking for good animation i'm looking for score if they're fight scenes what are the fight scenes like that sort of thing and <clears throat> i felt the other thing that that this particular film really struggled with was the the main characters were really forgettable uh yes. Hib hibiki was just like a dude i really want my, like the main character of an anime feature to be a little bit more interesting looking and some of the other characters too like the young kid that was on their team was just like he looked like a naruto naruto ripoff yeah and yeah. the 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 female lead uh character uta it was just like something that was like she looked like something out of sailor moon and i was just like okay you know we've got this sort of like you know blue haired school school girl looking thing and that's just what it reminded me of it was like something it should just look like something out of sailor moon to me so the characters didn't really work uh too well for me and the plot line was totally totally gibberish basically right right but like you said i do think that there's a place for this because uh the score was well done and the animation was top notch and i really really like the color palettes that they chose so for me this is just like a it's a very very c it's just a c it's like a, I like, I like, it's like a 6.5 i was gonna give it a 5.5 .5. yeah and just That's like because it, it's makes fun sense, to though. watch like in the sense of like if you're not yeah like you don't invested. care about anything you just watch yeah. it you right. just watch it and be fine with it but it, right. there's just nothing <clears throat> storyline about it that is interesting yeah it's like i liked they incorporated it into the parkour stuff pretty well like you know like the bubble jumping and stuff like that but right you know Little I think it's like parkour is kind of lame. Parkour. So I think that's probably part of it too. See, I like those scenes. I thought that those scenes were interesting. More I interesting. Just, it was I, really the only action in the movie. You know what I, mean? I just mean like in general, parkour is lame. The ninjas do parkour. Man. But they don't say they're doing parkour. No, they're just that's kind ninjas. of the thing. Yeah. 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 They just do it. What's do you remember that episode of The Office? Yes. Where they were doing 100%. parkour. Yeah, so I do that sometimes like around the house and the kids like just follow me and they'll like just roll across <laughs> the ottoman and go parkour and then just run like that jump off the bottom of the step yeah i mean that's awesome so bubble uh six out of ten cumulatively for us but i think yeah. that kind of makes sense 
because i'm really 100%, anime yeah. guy you're not as big on anime right um, yeah so that makes sense that you would give it a little bit lower i'm more forgiving of the plot because i'm just like it's just whatever to me Sure. And it was one of those things is that as I was watching, I was like, okay, this doesn't make sense. I should just like pause this and watch it another time when I'm in a better headspace for it. But then I just kept watching it. Sure. It over. For me, it was just like, am I dumb? And then like, no, I'm not dumb. <laughs> this plot doesn't make sense, but that's no. okay. And it's it fine. looks fine. It looks, it looks fine. good. It looks great. Yeah. 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 So we'll move on to our reality TV slog for the week. <clears throat> excuse me survivor the finale the two-hour finale uh we're treated to a pair of surprising immunity challenge wins in the first immunity challenge mike wins a station challenge in which Lindsay had an advantage and jonathan annihilated the obstacle course jonathan faded in the puzzle portion and mike narrowly defeated Lindsay. Uh, at tribal, Mike gave his idol to Marianne, and Lindsay was immune was eliminated in the final immunity challenge, the classic ball drop challenge. Mike and Marianne are eliminated quickly, seemingly paving the way for Jonathan, but he takes his eye off the ball, giving Romeo the final win at at the final tribal. Jonathan and Mike face off in a fire making challenge, and Jonathan, who is known to be pretty good at making fire mr jeff fails to match the burning inferno that mike created at final jury tribal marianne reveals a hidden idol she had kept secret throughout the game which she used to create an automatic final four bid and the jury was persuaded to give marianne the title of soul survivor before we get into this i have to say Hmm. that the only the only way that this would have been a more unlikely final three would have been if you and me were there, even though we haven't been at the entire show. Yeah. 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 (laughs) So (laughs) with all that being said, the survivor finale, I hated it because Marianne won nothing. And it's one of those things where like, in most championships, you have to win something. And she literally did nothing to me. And it's just like, she was I'm so glad annoying. she didn't do early. anything to you. Yeah. But in the show, she, she did won. nothing to me. Well, I mean, like, there was nothing that impressed me about her. Even her, like, her game playing wasn't that impressive. It wasn't that impressive. She did what anybody in that position would have done, I would hope, unless you're a complete moron. I mean, like, it was just one of those things where, like, she people didn't respect her game because she had no game and then she built around it which like if you watch this show which everyone on there does you react to it i mean even even myself who hasn't watched a show in 20 years would react to like if i haven't won anything or haven't contributed in any way which she has not won and did not contribute in any way you're going to react to it and it's just one of these weird things and this is not this is not in defense of Jonathan. This is more to me like in defense of Lindsay, who I thought was like actually the most well-rounded player of this entire thing. And she played the, she played the games, right? Where you win and you're athletic and you're strong and you're a person that can like do things. She also played the game game, right? And like Marianne didn't, to me, Marianne just reacted. She wasn't proactive. And that's what really bugged me about this. And then her, like, I thought her whole spiel to everyone at the jury thing was complete bullshit. And I, like, just think it was. I don't think she was good at this game. And I haven't watched this, like I said, in 20 years. I think she was average at this game. And it's one of those things where, like, being average is better than being good at either of the other two things. And that is where I think that's probably Survivor, is you don't really want to be good at either thing. You just want to be average at both. And... To me, that's upsetting as someone that's a competitor and someone that like wants to win everything. Like I literally got upset the other day and we had teacher things where a like we had a game where it was balloon toss and a balloon exploded on me before I even caught it. And so I lost. It was a balloon toss and the balloon unwrapped. It unknotted before it got to me. So I lost, even though it had nothing to do with me. 
So right. I took that personally, like Michael Jordan would have. And I was like, I'm not losing another one of these bad boys, you know, and I didn't. And it was just, you know, I take literally everything so competitively and she, whether she did or she didn't take things competitively, it just wasn't any, there was nothing impressive to me about her game. And it's not like, to me, this is why I like the challenge because people take things personally and then you still have to do both things. You have to, you have to be a competitor and you have to play the game. To me, it's like, this is one of the things where you can just be really average. Like Romeo made it this far. And Romeo is a fucking can of beans. Like he is. And well, it, like, I, his little his little sob story at the end meant nothing to me. I was like, just be done with this. I know this is three hours long, Romeo, but you need to stop talking because you suck. Like I just like I just he's just so boring. And it's like no one cares about you, Romeo. And the fact you made this far proves you don't matter because like literally you are just a ghost in this show and i mean he doesn't matter as a person i mean he doesn't matter in this show where like he was so much not a threat that it's like if he goes all the way to the end i will beat him because he literally brings nothing here that's why he went to the end though right right because when the other people in in power who if i'm final four and i have the immunity necklace who do i want to have sit next to me Jonathan, who won all these challenges, who right. was a provider, who was, you know, chafed people a little bit with his social game, but won immunities and literally car- carried their tribe through the through the tribe portion of the game. Do I want to sit next to him, or do I want to sit next to a guy who I know is not going to get any votes? Right. I want to sit I next to that I don't I want to all that. I guess votes. this would be my question, Brad. Is has this been a point of contention? that the jury is stupid but i don't think they were though because no i don't mean this jury i just mean in in general the jury portion of the show is stupid okay because i don't like it i don't like it at all it's because that's not how you survive an island it doesn't come down to a jury it's like who literally lives but that's not what this game is it's called survivor yeah but that's not what the game is so you have to play by it should be called trial by fire well, the last one, I guess you could make that case, but yeah, I just don't, I don't like the way it ends. It's I love, I will say I love this show and I haven't been, I, you got me hooked on it. I do not like the jury. I think that, okay. So let me back up. I would say the three best people at playing survivor in terms of outwit outlast i'll play would have been drea Lindsay, and jonathan all of them sitting on the the jury yeah. why yeah well Lindsay went home with an idol in her pocket so i don't feel <laughs> right. bad i don't feel bad no, that I, she's don't, on I don't feel bad either yeah, drea yeah. went home with all kinds of shit in her pocket she her didn't know how to play the game cool. she literally did not well i think she did game. and she got but she got played and that's what often happens in this game and then Jonathan, I'm pretty good at making fire, Mr. Jeff. Well, you choked. I mean, I love Jonathan, but right. when, the, when the chips are down, you know, I don't know. If champions make choked. big plays. Champions. I don't make think big he choked. Plays. I think that Mike just was that fire was awesome by Mike. Yeah. Also a fireman. Yeah, but you put out fires. He fucking has to make fires, though. You put you make controlled fires as a fireman. Whatever, not with coconut husk. It's you still uh, got to do it, right? Like he knows okay. the abstracts of it, but R- regardless, right? Regardless. I think that if Mike had come into jury and said, "I faked playing an honorable game," yeah. it was my strategy the whole time. He would have won, so he yep. didn't manage the jury correctly. Romeo wasn't no. going to get any votes. Marianne kept this little trinket in her pocket and brought it out at the right time. So she played, she managed the jury appropriately. She also didn't have any enemies. The only move of consequence that she made was being the quote unquote brains behind getting Omar out. But even that is suspect because Jonathan 
Jonathan Gaunton. brought up that it was his idea, but I would say that that's not either Marianne or Jonathan's fault that it was conveyed that way because Omar had an idol that was not shown in the ed- in the edit, not an idol in advantage. Right, 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 right. Yeah, he had like cancel a vote or steal a vote, something like that. And just... so, like, I I guess <clears throat> from on one standpoint, I understand your frustration with the jury process, but it's been that way for 42 seasons and the people who are playing know how to play. So this is the thing I, and this is, I, you know, whatever, like this show is very popular and I'm not, I shouldn't criticize it on that end of things. Obviously it does what it does. How far do you think you would go playing your best survivor game, Brent? Cause I think you and I actually have exact counter things in this game i actually do if you and i are in this show which will add this is probably who do you think would go further and i think we're gonna have the same answer me you would go further yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. you would go further and i would i think that it's my emotions would get too big yeah i would probably win like three i honestly think i could win three or four of these things and like i really do i really think especially if i knew i was going to be on this show if i have a six month advance warning i'm like gaming for this stuff this is my life this is running every day this is balancing on stuff this is eating salads and protein and just cut and just looking like a freaking specimen i come on here and i win like three or four things in a row and people are like well he's got to go and then you're in the back just like doing your thing. And I'm not saying you wouldn't prepare either. I think you would prepare, but in a different way. I think that what's really the people sitting on their couch watching this, this is my guess is I don't think there's any way to any way to prepare for the starving and the lack of sleep. I just don't think that there is like you can, like you said, I, I would just eat this. I would just eat that. I don't think that you can prepare for that realistically. No, no. Because at the end of the day, if I'm that hungry, I'm going to go eat something. You know what I mean? I can cut all I want, but this is like, you are forced to not eat anything. And the one gentleman who won ended up getting some type of virus or a parasite. He lost like, this was when it was 39 days, not 26 days. He lost like 90 pounds on the Island. That's some crazy. crazy like that. Yeah. Doesn't even seem accurate to way you could lose weight, but well, he had like I said, he had like a parasite, right, a parasite. or something. Yeah. So I just don't think that, that there's a reasonable way to prepare for that. I think that I think that that like you said, your emotions would get probably get the better of you. Whereas at this point in my life, I think I'm just average athletically enough that I could sure. do some things and some challenges, but it would be this, that, you know, my brain, that, that like observational skills and stuff like and that. I think I would be fine. Like, I mean, putting a puzzle together, I mean, and that's not my necessarily, sh- I, get, I would do that, but what happened is like, someone would say something and I'd be like, what did you say? Like, especially with, and I'm countering, I'm, I'm putting in the fact that I don't have food and I don't have sleep. Yeah. Like as a right mind, if I'm getting the proper nutrition every day, which is the challenge, which I think like legitimately, I think I could win a challenge even at this age. I think I could, if I knew I was going to go on there, I think I could win the challenge. And that's why survivors. Yeah, until you got in a hall brawl with. Well, until I got in a hall brawl, but CT. even then it's just like, maybe I don't even get into one of those things. You know what I mean? Yeah, like maybe there's yeah. a point where I don't, because that's a thing where that's by chance. And, sure. you know, but I'm saying if all things are playing out, like, yeah, I'm not going to win a hall brawl against most big people. You know what I mean? Right. Like, unless something happens where they blow their knee out, but I'm just talking on like that end of things. It's like, for me, my emotions would just get too high with that lack of food or that lack of whatever. Yeah. yeah I, and also I, I just it's... wouldn't be that excited about Applebee's. I'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, sorry. Damn. I will say that there are good ships and there are bad ships, but there are no ships like friendships. That's true. That's yeah, true. I actually really. Are like you going to apply? I'm going to apply to be on it. Are you applying to be on it? No. You should. No, it'd be a great weight loss thing for me. Drop some pounds. I just want to do it just to do it. Like, yeah, sure. 
I'm not going to get on, but right. might as well try. I don't know. You're, you're colorful enough to. Maybe. That's the thing is, I don't like, I don't bring anything to the table in terms of like, but that helps too. Like, interesting so people on this show, Brandon. No, there's watchability so many or anything. Like we don't that. remember the first person vote off this show, though. I like, do because it was boring. my draft pick. Oh, that's right. It was, it was that Zach Worsen <laughs> yeah, or whatever. He was his name bad. Is. He, was, he bad. was the worst of the burgers. Speaking of yes. burgers, burgers, we move on to Top Chef and we're going to have a double Top Chef tonight. A little double patty, a little quarter, double quarter this pounder. Were, yeah, a little double quarter pounder. So starting with episode 12, there was, <clears throat> there was no quick fire in this episode. Uh, but there was a, a bit of a challenge before the challenge. The chefs had the opportunity slash task of heading out on the open sea and catching the fish that would be used in their dish. Uh, each each chef did catch uh at least one fish uh there was they were they were out for catfish and with and uh redfish out in the sea uh so each of the chefs did did catch and then they were tasked with making something from from their catch uh so the loser unfortunately here was it came down to nick wallace and damar brown unfortunately nick uh was the loser uh despite the fact that gail raved about the flavors and the crunch and seasoning of his redfish tacos other judges said that the fish was dry and that his fish cakes lost their shape and seemed incomplete they did lose their shape uh so it was him that got sent home the winner here was sarah welsh coming back from last chance kitchen uh, she she went ahead and smoked her redfish and covered it in pastrami spice and paired it with carrot butter and Parisian nochi for a yeah. pastrami sandwich that blew the judges away. Uh, so there was that. So there was that. And in the most recent episode, episode 13, there was a quick fire challenge in which uh, the chefs had to uh, um looking trying to find here uh they had to make a chimichanga inspired dish uh from the carne seca thinly sliced meat that is dried in the sun <clears throat> in tucson arizona i guess we should say that the that the that the competition moved to tucson um the winner of that was also sarah so she got a 30 minute head start on the rest of the chefs heading into the final elimination round before the final and the chefs had to make a sweet and savory dish featuring a one of the 300 species of cactus and the only native pepper in the united states the chiltepin yes the loser unfortunately due to his savory dish was chef demar brown a pickly pear cake glazed with pickly pear prickly pear topped with buttermilk cheese uh cigarro and frozen mango was his sweet dish but he failed to make a good savory dish uh pork shoulder that incorporated barbecue sauce made with prickly pear cactus and ch- uh chiltepin a Haitian pickled relish with chiltepin, grilled Nepales, and red bean puree. Uh, that was the dish that kind of did him in. The winner was Evelyn, Chef Evelyn Garcia, who made, you know, something that won, whatever. <laughs> <sighs> she made shit that won. She made something that won, and it was very uninteresting, I'll be honest, but. It won. Yeah, it did win. Uh, uh, I, see, this is the last before the finale. So this was an episode, or do, if we're gonna do a double episode, and I think I'll just yeah. combine my thoughts. That's is like you have to do a complete dish. Like you know, it's yeah. it, you know, we had one. It was just one dish. We had two. It was two dishes, and like you have to do everything right. I think they were both two dishes. I think but they were both. The fish was a hot and cold. I think that, that's right. The fish was a hot yeah. and cold. That's right. I'm sorry. For uh, it's been, feels yeah. It feels. Yeah. But it was one of those things where it's like, 
you have to do everything right. You don't have to do everything perfect. Right. And, and right. that's where like the things change in these later episodes is, you know, or new episodes, however you want to look at it. Um, you have to not screw up yeah. and any flaw you have hurts you. They just really, it hurts you so much. And as much as I love Top Chef, it's really about not screwing up more than it is doing something great. Yeah. I and that's, you know, I, I think that's just <clears throat> kind of where this show has been for a really long time. It used to be actually you got rewarded more for doing something great. And if you mm-hmm. screwed up, it was like, well, we, you showed you could do something great if there were two things. But now it's more weighted if you don't do something great than if you do something or if you mess up something, than if you do something great. And this is just where the show's at, which is. I, I think there's good or bad with any of these things, honestly. Like, I'm not going to try to make myself sound smart about this. It's just, would I rather go to a restaurant where I have, like, let's say I get five, you do like a tasting menu and you have six things, mm-hmm. and five of the things are really good, not great, and then one thing is terrible. And you, but the other place you go to is six places and they're all average. Mm-hmm that's kind of the taste palette now it's like would i rather have five great things and one terrible thing or would i rather have six average things and i really think this is where evelyn works because i don't think she does anything that's astounding and (laughs) even they kind of say that they don't say what they say without saying it but she's like evelyn you kind of you did this and this and this and it's not putting anything against her it's just i don't she does nothing to me that's impressive Mm -hmm. but she also does nothing it's like well she sucks like she knows how to cook food. Right. But so did my grandma. And so did my, you know, so does my mom. It's like, but they're not winning top chef. No offense to my mom. Um, but it's just like one of those things where it's just, I don't, it's weird the way this has gone. I would rather have five impressive things and one sucky thing than six average things. And that's just where this show's at personally, where I, think and I think at. that that's why Buddha's is going to win. Because yeah. he's the guy that can do something great without <clears throat> at the very end, he's back breaking right. mistakes. Yeah, yeah. At the and very I was end, bummed. I think he's gonna win. <clears throat> I hope so. I, was I think that, he's the only one great left. Yeah, yeah. I was bummed that Damar and Nick both left because I liked both of them. Same, yep. And I thought that really from start to finish, they both showed they both showed that they could do better things than Evelyn. But I think that like you said, Evelyn's just showed that she can be, she can make a consistent seven. Whereas <clears throat> those guys can make a 10, but they can't do it consistently. And they have a 10 and they have a two. Yeah. They came up That's- with, well, I don't even think it was that. I don't even think it was that drastic. I think that they had right, but it's drastic enough in those two episodes. They both just had one aspect of their menu that just, fell flat or wasn't up to standard and that's what got them both in the end so you know you can't be and this is the nick thing is you can't be at the final five and have time management issues as much as i like him and i would right i think that nick wallace chef nick wallace from from you know the the gulf coast has made in all the seasons of of top chef that i have watched have has actually made food that is most appealing to me I would say because, he and Damar make oh, food yeah. that's just appealing yeah. to people. Like I and I just because like as much as we watch this, it's like I would never eat three quarters of the things that get made on this show because they're just like I don't know half the time. Like what were we joking about? The one week it was like chicken fudge, like chicken liver yeah. fudge, right? Chicken liver what? fudge, corn ice cream. And, Fuck that. And I, I and I am someone that goes more that direction where I'll have weird things, right. but I also just. You know what I also just love? A BLT. Pizza and burgers. Yeah. Yeah, pizza and burgers. And it's just yeah. like, and so sometimes it's that kind of thing where it's just make something good like that. It's not, but that's the problem is like sometimes people can't just make a good burger. Yeah. Right. And, you know, and this is where it's at. I mean, Buddha is, is probably my favorite now. Um, I think if he were to lose, it would be a massive upset. I, and he's been my favorite for a while, but I mean, in the sense of my actual favorite person left. Yeah, that too. <laughs> no, because yeah. I think Demar was my favorite person left up until yeah. he was gone. Because I just liked his personality. I also liked yeah. his story more. And yeah. you know, I think that just. But Evelyn, I like every week dislike more. Yeah. 
I will 100%. And I don't, you know, I know it sounds weird, but I just don't like her. I just don't yeah. think, I don't think there's a story there. I don't think there's anything behind that. I don't think her food is innovative or doing anything. I just don't. And it's like, I always look at this show and I would, when Jane and I are watching, it's like, who do I want to actually go to that restaurant? And I would go to, to Mars restaurant. Which is in Chicago, time. by the way. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm planning on actually going to it, actually. Yeah. Um, that's like something for me to do. And it's like, and I would not go to hers. Yeah. I just, and there's nothing there. It's like, I could get her food literally at like a um, chain restaurant, I feel like. I know that sounds mean, but like, Probably I honestly not. feel like. I feel like I could like an upper scale chain restaurant, like a, not like a big chain, but like one of those smaller chains or something, because I don't think flavor wise, she brings a lot, but she just does, gets by, but that's yeah. me. Yeah. So we'll see how things shake out. We'll It'll be two weeks really before we have that finale, yeah. but uh, me, your recommendations. Uh, so I finished against empathy, Paul Bloom. Uh, we talked about this before. It really kind of weirdly fits into what's happened recently. Um, and I could go on about a lot of stuff and you, I think you could too. I think you and I are both in a boat of um, anger, probably number one and, you know, sadness and all these things, but it's about the fact that it's not about pretending or acting like you could be in someone's shoes is actually trying to make a difference. And that's more important than being like, Oh, I feel your pain. It's more that I see your pain and let's try to improve upon that. And that's definitely something that our country is, definitely been uh rough with lately um you know with what's going on and i will you know like if you want to know my opinions on this follow my instagram follow my twitter um you know i think you know follow my life uh, i've had a i've had an interesting you know go with these kind of things just in general personally as a white man and so as a white man i've had an interesting go with the way these things are and i'm privileged so I can only imagine how it goes for anyone else in this world. Um, also, I work at a school, and I'll just say that. Um, fuck the police is basically what I'm saying. Fuck the police. Um, I don't started Tokyo Vice agree early. with you on that. I, you don't have to, Britain, but I will fucking say fuck the police every day of my life. Um, started Tokyo Vice. Uh, because we watched the show very early, started it very early. Um, right now, it, like you kind of know what you're getting into because of the show. He's a good writer, obviously, as a journalist. Obviously, uh, Harry's House, been listening to a lot of Harry Styles. And then also just because like we did our summer show, and I was like, oh, I'll listen to Cheryl Crow because like, now I'm just hooked. And so I've just been listening to Cheryl Crow's Essentials on Apple Music, which is great. One of those things where I was like, oh, she literally has two and a half hours of like banger hits if you went and saw her in concert it's one of those things where it just you would just sing along to everything for shows of me uh we just finished angeline about this uh she's still alive but this very like iconic famous person for being famous in la who had just billboards up about herself she did nothing other than just being famous it's on peacock stars emmy rosam and like i said um earlier i saw top gun maverick um and i just really enjoy it we'll talk about that on the show brent what about you um probably not the best recommendation for somebody who says he disagrees with that sentiment but we own this city <laughs> um, <laughs> here's my thing and and obviously if you want to if you want to catch our political musings you can listen to that on the second tuesday of every sure. of every week but it's just good cops are like good referees. If they're doing your job, if they're doing their job, then you don't know. Well, it's like they're better off dead, but no, no. And I'm not even laughing. Like I'm not, I don't think that that's funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think good, good cops are like good referees. If they're doing your job, you don't know they're there. Sure. Sure. And yeah. I think I should agree the 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 vast majority of police are especially like places where i live they're just people who are trying to help and unfortunately sometimes they get into situations in which they're way over their head and they react badly and i'm not saying that that i'm not saying that that's an excuse that they should be trained better obviously you know we put so much money into 
certain things and, and not enough money into, you know, proper training and things like that. There's better ways to handle all of this. And, you know, like I said, I don't want to get too, too in depth on the political side of these, of these things, but there are bad cops. I'm not going to say they're not, there's, there's terrible, like, you know, there's crooked cops, there's, you know, abusive cops, there's cops that don't do their job when they should, which is obviously what, what seemed to have happened here. But I think just like there's, there's good and bad of everything. So you can't just, you know, put a, put a label on it. I just, I also think that it's, that it is somewhat unfortunate that when bad cops get caught doing bad things or when cops that aren't trained get in over their head and they make bad decisions, it does kind of put a, a very negative crosshair on everyone. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, and it's just, it's honestly, it's just a fucked up time in our country and there's, it's scary. And I have kids, I have a kid in kindergarten and, you know, it's a very scary time and it's not just that it's so many, so many other things. And, you know, I, I, now that we're here, um, I used to make fun of make America great again, like, because it's a good like it's easy well, because of the person that came up it's, with it yeah it's it's, it's low hanging it's low hanging fruit but the reality of it is that you know there's america really, was never great and well i don't <laughs> maybe that's I don't necessarily it. The, i don't necessarily think that that's that's the um i think that that is a prescient thing because there's been so much bad things that just get swept under the rug in our history you know what i mean sure sure. if that makes sense and i do think that there there are great things about america you know it's i I love living here this is one of the things like i would i would take this over anywhere else but see i'm getting to the point where i don't know that and but my thing is it shouldn't be something i question right based on that's the thing it's like the fact i have to think about it is a sad thing in our country yeah yeah and it's just, we used to it's not just, question it it used to be like this is the best right. country to live in and everyone right. thought that not yeah. americans other people in other yeah. countries are like i want to live here and right. now it's not necessarily the case it's just yeah and unfortunately i think that people are very blind to different things and they're just not willing to try to compromise anymore. And sure. it's all, you know, you're either all this way or you're all that way. And I really generally think that most, most reasonable people are somewhere in the middle. Uh, but how many reasonable people are left? <laughs> right. is the question. Right. Yeah. But with that being said, we own this city. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, we'll be reviewing it this upcoming week here after the sixth episode drops on Monday. HBO series starring a lot of different people, mainly John. What's his Burtonall? Yeah, Burtonall. Yeah. Burtonall. Yeah. I never really liked him before. I never saw anything that I was like, like, oh man, he's in it. That enhances my experience. He's really good in this. Uh, but I'm going to leave I'm looking my, forward to burning through six episodes. Uh, you will enjoy it. I will say I know that. I will. Yeah. Um, and then I've just been, I've been back on chili peppers, unlimited love, just kind of sure. giving it all the listens through. And I'm reading that book, the everything now book. I'm just reading it very slowly. Good. Sure. So, so there's that. Uh, but if you are Rosecrans Baldwin, Rose Crans Baldwin, follow them on follow them on Instagram. Um, the BXG podcast publishes every Friday and Monday at nine a.m. on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and other podcast services around the globe. You good? Yeah, my back just tightened up. I'm good oh, though. I'm sorry to hear that. Catch us on social media: facebookcom slash podcast Instagram at BHC Podcast at GT Phils at Y2B, Twitter at BHC Podcast at GT Philson at Y2B. Uh, check us out on the YouTube channels. 
for trailer reactions, reviews, and other shenanigans. So just that, yeah, and thanks everyone for the summer reviews. Uh, good, a lot of good replies back on that. Yeah, good uh, feedback on that. Good, good that, feedback. Well, have that episode. video coming out. Yeah. I haven't done the video for it yet, but it'll probably a lot of good feedback and keep it coming. Um, yeah. I think, I mean, you know, I just think that's one of those things where everyone loves summer. And if you love summer or yeah. you dislike summer, I think it's actually a good either you love it or you hate it thing. I think it's a good thing to listen to just for that thing. And sure. let us know your thoughts, your feelings. Yeah. Summer blockbuster, definitely the biggest thing about this, I think. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Lisa Maya. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Uh, hot dogs, hamburgers. Yep. Both. Both. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Watermelon. Watermelon. Hell yeah. Watermelon. Sugar baby. Seedless yeah. or seed full? Seedless. Seed full. Seed full is taste better. Seedless, easier, easier to handle. Yeah. Well, I mean, I eat the rind. Yeah. So. You don't care. Doesn't matter. No, long hair don't care. Take care, friends. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody.